Uh, the difference between left and right is a fundamental disagreement concerning an empirical question. The right recognizes, as a matter of fact, the existence of individual human differences and diversities and accepts them as natural, whereas the left denies the existence of such differences and diversities or tries to explain these differences and diversities away and in any case regards them as something unnatural that must be rectified to establish a natural state of human equality. The right recognizes the existence of individual human differences not just with regard to the physical location and makeup of the human environment and the individual human body. More importantly, the right also recognizes the existence of differences in the mental makeup of people. That is, in their cognitive abilities, in their talents, in their psychological dispositions and motivations. The right recognizes that these mental differences resulting from the interaction of the physical environment and the physical human body uh, are the result of both environmental and physiological and biological factors. Moreover, the right not merely recognizes the existence of these differences and diversities, it realizes also that the outcome of input differences will again be different. And it accepts these different outcomes of different inputs as normal and natural. The left, on the other hand, is convinced of the fundamental equality of men, that all men are created equal. It does not deny the patently obvious, of course, that there are environmental and physiological differences. That is, that some people live in the mountains and others on the seaside, or that some men are tall and others short, some white and others black, some male and others female. Um, but the left does deny the existence of mental differences, or insofar as these are too apparent to be entirely denied, it tries to explain them away as somehow accidental. That is, the left either explains such differences as solely environmentally determined, or else, in those cases where it cannot be denied that biological factors do play a causal role in determining success or failure, the left considers these differences as pure luck and the resulting outcome of individual success or failure as undeserved and in any case, was are caused by advantage, advantageous or disadvantageous environmental circumstances or biological attributes, all observable individual human differences are to be equalized somehow. And where this cannot be done literally, the left insists that the undeservedly lucky must somehow compensate the unlucky so that every person will be accorded an equal station in life in correspondence with what they think is the natural equality of all men. Now, with this short characterization of the right and the left, I return to the subject of libertarianism. Is libertarianism compatible with the worldview of the right? And is libertarianism compatible with leftist views? Now, as for the right, the answer seems to be an emphatic yes. Every libertarian only vaguely familiar with social reality will have no difficulty whatsoever acknowledging the fundamental truths of the rightist worldview. He can, and in light of the empirical evidence, indeed, he must agree with the right's empirical claim regarding the fundamental, not only physical, but also mental inequality of men. And he can, in particular, also agree with the right's normative claim of laissez-faire, that is, that this natural human inequality will in 
inevitably result also in unequal outcomes and that nothing can or should be done about this. There's only one important caveat, however. While the right may accept all human inequalities, whether of starting points or of outcomes as natural, the libertarian would insist that only those inequalities are natural and should not be interfered with that have come into existence by following the ground rules of peaceful human interaction that I mentioned at the beginning. Inequalities, however, that are the result of violations of these rules do require corrective action and should be eliminated. The required corrective action, however, is not motivated by any kind of egalitarianism, but by the desire for restitution. He, and only he, who can show that he has been robbed, defrauded, or legally disadvantaged should be made whole again by those, and only by those, who have committed these crimes against him and his property including also cases where restitution would result in, at an even greater inequality as when a poor man had defrauded and owned, owed restitution to a rich one. On the other hand, as for the left, the answer seems to be an equally emphatic no. The empirical claim of the left that there exists no significant mental differences between individuals and by implication between various groups of people and what appear to be such differences are due solely to environmental factors and would disappear if only the environment were equalized is contradicted by all everyday experience and mountains of empirical research. Men are not and cannot be made equal. However, it is in particular the implied normative claim and activist agenda of the left that makes it incompatible with libertarianism. The leftist goal of equalizing everyone or equalizing everyone's station in life is incompatible with private property, whether in one's own body or in external things. Instead of peaceful cooperation, it brings about unending conflict and leads to undecidedly unegalitarian establishment of a permanent ruling class lording it over the rest of us as their material to be equalized. There exist countless individual human differences and there exist even more differences between different groups of individuals since each individual can be fit into countless different groups. It is the power elite that determines which of these differences, whether of individuals or of groups, is to count as advantageous and lucky or disadvantageous and unlucky or as completely irrelevant. It is the power elite that determines how, out of countless possible ways, to actually do the equalizing of the lucky and the unlucky, that is, what and how much to take from the lucky and give to the unlucky to achieve equality. And whatever equalization is then achieved, since countless new differences and inequalities are constantly re-emerging, the equalizing job of the power elite can never ever come to a natural end, but must instead go on forever, endlessly. The egalitarian worldview of the left is not only incompatible with libertarianism, however, it is so out of touch with reality that one must wonder how anyone can take it seriously. At least for a libertarian, the answer should be obvious. The egalitarian doctrine achieved this status not because it is true, but because it provides the perfect intellectual cover for the drive toward totalitarian social control by the ruling elite.
The ruling elite therefore enlisted the help of the intelligentsia or the chattering class and it was put on the payroll or otherwise subsidized and in return it delivered the desired egalitarian message which of course the intelligentsia knows to be wrong yet which is enormously beneficial to their own employment prospects. And so the most enthusiastic proponents of the egalitarian nonsense can be found among the intellectual class. Given then that libertarianism and the egalitarianism professed by the left are obviously incompatible, it must come as a surprise that many who call themselves libertarians today are and consider themselves to be part of the left. How is such a thing possible? Now, what ideologically unites these left libertarians, who refer themselves as left libertarians, is their active promotion of various anti-discrimination policies and the advocacy of a policy of free, non-discriminatory immigration. But how is it possible to reconcile this anti-discrimination stand with private property, which all libertarians are supposed to regard as the very cornerstone of their philosophy, and which, after all, means exclusive property, and hence logically implies discrimination? 